All right, so now our base concept when we start running our inside zone pass, play action pass off it, we start guys with verticals, right? Whether it's four verticals, three verticals, whatever it might be. So here, when we do this, we marry it up so it looks the same. I'll draw it up so you guys can see it, and then we'll watch the video. If you have questions, make sure you just shout them out. Tell me if you can't see this. So here we're running inside zone to the right, okay? And obviously we just attach a one to the, to the number scheme to get our play action pass. But everybody's got a gap to their right, to the right. The tight end whispers to the tackle to tell him he's out, okay? We don't want him thinking too much, so he's going to have to leave now. But. So he's going to be out. So he's going to step first like it's, inside, like it's outside zone or inside zone. He's going to step, and then he's releasing vertical. Okay? We're stepping, we're stepping, we're stepping. It's action. If we don't tag it with naked, right? It's tagged with seams, it's tagged with clover, whatever it might be. That lets our guys know that it's pocket protection. So our swiper's coming back across, and he's blocking this thing for inside leverage, right? It's pocket protection. Everything's blocked for inside leverage. Our tailback is selling the fake, and then he's immediately going back door. We've got great protection front side, okay? What we're worried about is we're all running inside zone, inside zone, inside zone, inside zone, where we can get multiple defenders off the edge, off the back side, protect your quarterback's back side. The quarterback is going to sell it, and then ideally he's going to work one step to his right and three steps of depth after the mesh. That gets our launch point at eight and a half yards. Our landmarks, we have three verticals. The landmarks, the bottom of the numbers, bottom of the numbers, and what we tell our guys with bottom of the numbers, bottom of the numbers to the sideline, seven yards, right? Now that gives us our quarterback an opportunity to put that ball on the outside shoulder so our guy or no guy, we call this, and I'm sure a lot of you do, the lawn, stay out of the lawn if you're a receiver, the only thing that takes you to the lawn is, a, is the football, all right? Now, with our tight end, he takes a pre-snap. You got one or two. I got two. Guys, where's the void? In the middle. Take it. All right? We're here. And then he's going to work to the middle of the field. He gets one guy in the middle of the field. Right? We're going to attack the middle of the field, and we're going to snap it underneath. We want to try to step on his toes. Now, I've got a clip of a slot receiver doing it, but we're going to try to step on his toes, and we're going to throw because you're not going to run by him, guy. You're a tight end. No offense, if you could run by him, you'd be a receiver, right? You'd think you're sweet. You're not. You're tight end. We still love you. But we're going to snap underneath that guy, okay? We get four verticals off of it, which we don't a lot just because of the protection. But if we were to, say, be in something like this over here, and our, we only had one guy fitting back side. If we had four verticals, now our landmark would be two yards outside the hash, two yards outside the hash. And this stems off when we teach our five-step vertical game, whether how many immediates we have, whether it's three or four, what the landmarks are, and that kind of stuff. So here we're in a situation where 12 personnel, we action it. I, I don't think it's a great fate by our tailback. What we tell the guy is, if you feel he could be threatened, FTF, right? And you can take it however you want. Forget the fake, whatever the fake. Hey, man, we need the protection, okay? We need the protection first. So he's, he's getting a little antsy. But the other guy that I think that we have to do a better job of coaching and we have to make sure that he trusts it is your right tackle, okay? That right tackle. Go out there and get it, man. Go out there and get it. Because the only place you can't get beat is where? Outside. Go get his outside pet. Because you got your right guard coming with you, man. He's going to help you on the inside. Center's coming with you. He's going to help you on the inside. So we want to be ultra aggressive and go get the outside digit of the widest defender. That's really going to sell the play side safety. Because what are we trying to affect here? We're trying to affect the play side safety. So we got too high, get vertical. The only thing that I, I'm a little bit concerned with our tight end is he splits them, right? Stay vertical, man. Don't split because now the backside safety, who bought like hell, what's he going to do when he figures out it's passed? 
oh, you know what? Turn and burn, right? Turn and burn. And that's throwing blind for a quarterback. He's not worried about the backside safety. He sees a lot of green grass. Coach, protection question. Are yes. You, are you calling your, your swipe or your H back there? Yeah, your H back. Um, do you want him going flat? Do you want him to hug the line? Yes. Kid depth? Yep. And we tell him at his aiming point, when it's the protection or when it's split zone, your aiming point is the inside leg of the backside guard. And we want you to dig it out. Ideally, it should look like this. Right? So we're getting such great movement on the backside. We're counting on the movement. And if it is the play action pass off it, I want to make sure that I dig it out and get inside out to pocket protection. So we need to be inside out on the first man outside our in man on the backside of it. So here's the same thing. We're running the seams. It's one high. So we, obviously, guys, they're very worried about the post, right? For whatever reason. So the safety is like, well, he's, the tight end's never going to get to the middle of the field defender. So now we're working the perimeter. I, I don't like the receiver. The receiver makes a great catch and, and all that stuff, but it's a terrible route, right? He, he gets by him right up top. He get, you got him. Now you need to, you need to stack him, right? You need to stack him. Do not, whatever you do, allow that defender, whether it's DB safety, whomever it might be, don't give him a leverage point, guys. Don't allow him to be in phase. Fight the phase and get him to chase you. Because now he has no leverage whatsoever. And he, make, he makes a great play. It, it's, but like we told him at the end, you know, during Sunday we're watching films, like you had to make this whatever type of catch. You know, he's like, I lost the guy. Yeah, he would have scored a touchdown to run around, the, run the route. Right? We're proud of you for making the play. Oh, but come on, guy. Let me see if I get the tight to how often would you say that you're simulating that inside it's to the right as opposed to going the other direction and simulating it to the left? 50-50. Um, yeah. yeah, we have, I mean, I don't think it matters whether it's a right-handed quarterback or a left-handed quarterback. I think it is naturally easier when you're here and you're right-handed to drift to your right a little bit to into the full slide of the protection as opposed to being here. You know, we talk about, you know, when you go to your left, I really want you to take that left toe, screw it into the ground, one, two, now you're hitting third, you know, so you screw it into the ground, you drop back, behind to get yourself, because you know you're going to the left, I need to work to my left, because the protection's working to the left. So here we are, we, we trade it, with our tight end and our line. <clears throat> Not good by the center, right? Hey, it's full slide protection. You need to have your eyes in your gap, right? Have your eyes in your gap. This is not on the guard. This is on Garrett in the center for not having his eyes in his gap and giving his guard his guard help. I, it's, it's pretty good by the right guard here. It's not very good by the tackle. That does not look like he's going out to reach that guy. Now, the thing that we do do sometimes, guys, is with our tackles, and whether it's uh, inside zone on the front side or whether it's uh, an insertion scheme where it's block out insert, we'll pop set sometimes with the tackles to get those fives to get upfield so we can create some, some larger CD at run lanes. But this throw is hurried a little bit because our center <coughs> hangs our right guard out to dry. Because like we talked about with our tackle going out to aggressively reach that guy, our guard needs to go out to aggressively reach that guy so he can keep his eyes in his gap and then we're in good shape. 